Welcome back to House TV Live. I'm Rick Spence, and with me today is Caitlin Wolf with Iconic by Caitlin Wolf out of beautiful Scottsdale, Arizona. This is the second time joining us on House TV Live. The first time she gave us a view of her own home, and this time we're doing something really beautiful in the Scottsdale Hills. So tell me about this beautiful home. Yeah, so this home is nestled basically like into a mountain, carved into a mountain. And honestly, when you first walk into the home, it almost feels like you're entering like a boutique hotel. It has just really amazing vibes, lots of like exposed brick. It was kind of the perfect inspiration and place to start for us to take into the spaces that we remodeled. Let's go into the first wow space, which is the kitchen. It really feels like the outside was brought inside in this home, both structurally and just sort of the tonality of the space. Tell me about how that influenced you in this kitchen. Absolutely. The most natural element that was brought into the space is probably that terrazzo hood. Everything else is a porcelain or quartz in terms of like the countertop materials, the backsplash. And that was really because our clients are heavy users at their kitchen. And so they wanted to make sure they had things that were going to be easy to clean, easy to maintain, something they don't have to seal over time. To choose something that looks like a natural stone, but it's not, we typically go more towards a matte finish. So this slab has a really textural hand to it. So when you touch it, you actually feel all the ridges of the veining. And so immediately somebody would think that that was a natural stone. The perimeter we did in a quartz that looks like a concrete, but I think making that edge a little bit chunkier also gives it more of a natural look to it. Our client actually was super tall and he wanted higher countertops than typical. So we actually went up to 38 inches instead of 36. Oh, really nice. Back to the terrazzo real quickly. How do you custom make a terrazzo? Like how complicated is that? And how do you do, you do like different batches and go and then test them? Because I imagine it has to cure and all that. And you go, okay, here's the different batches. And this is the one we like. Like, how did that work? Yeah, I mean, it's all a process. It's all handmade. We have a fabricator that we work with locally. It's a husband and wife team. We selected the actual aggregate that's in that slab, as well as the density, as well as the base color. You don't really know what you get until it's done because it's it's just everything's handmade. And so it just makes it really special for our clients. And it ended up being a, a showpiece because it's proportionally large in the space and it's centered right when you walk in the room. Love that. Tell me a little bit more about some of the finishes in the space, the really elongated, really interesting poles. Mm -hmm. And then you did something uh, really nice on the bottom cabinetry. There's just sort of like finger poles in the wood. Yeah. So we love like funky little details. So we're always looking at hardware or lighting, just ways that we can bring in, we can layer more finishes, more materials. It just gives it a more intimate, cozy feeling. The first material that really sets the tone is the flooring, a nice European white oak. That's definitely a natural element in the space that kind of sets the tone. And then with the cabinetry, we did a combination of kind of a putty colored laminate as well as a white oak veneer. So we're kind of bringing that white oak look from the floor onto some of the cabinetry. The island, we kept the integrated J pole. What's nice about that too is if you're walking like around an island, a high traffic space, your clothes aren't going to get caught on a handle. It's just like really clean. And then the poles that we did on the perimeter of the kitchen are more of like your focal point. So, but we liked bringing in kind of a softer element because the kitchen is pretty linear. You know, everything's pretty elongated, large in scale. So by bringing in hardware that had a little bit of a softer line that really played well. And we did it in like a dark bronze color. The faucets are a vintage nickel. So kind of playing with those vintage, almost like patinaed looking matte finishes um, just allowed us to kind of layer and bring in more of those outdoor elements inside. You know, it's funny you mentioned just something super practical, like catching your clothing on a handle going around. A cat. I've done that. I ripped a pair of shorts one time. Going around. I'm like, why, yeah, is this thing, why is this sticking out like this? Right. You know, it's like, yeah. tell me about the juxtaposition of the putty color mm -hmm. with the wood and why that works versus like, sometimes folks might think, oh, I'm doing the cabinets. I got to do them all the same. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we have two different cabinets uh, finishes and two different countertop finishes. So uh, we get that a lot from clients too. Like, is it okay that we have this many, you know, going on, but with the wood floors and adding some of the wood cabinetry, if we had done all wood, it would have almost just all blended together and you wouldn't have really been able to appreciate the wood that we do have in the space. So if you put too much of one element, it almost just becomes a little bit overwhelming. So the putty color almost just 
softens the look. Not that it disappears, but it just it's it's kind of creating like a base layer for the wood to shine. It looks like you get a lot of natural light in that space. Tell me about that big, beautiful window. Yeah, so it's called a gas strut window. It basically um, opens upward and horizontally upward. So you kind of like unclick the hooks on the left and the right. You give it a little push and it opens all the way up. And then you have this like beautiful, you know, countertop that runs outside and an indoor outdoor ports material, which again, which is why it also looks like concrete because it runs outside. Um, so now she was able to have seating at that countertop from the exterior. So if she's entertaining, she can put food there. She can, you know, drinks there. It's just a really nice way to be in the kitchen and still um, converse. But then she still has the seating in the island inside as well. That is super cool. All right, let's hop into the beverage room, which was previously sort of like a, a nook, like a dining nook of some sort. They never used it. I don't even think they went in that room. And really, that was because there was no doors in that space and every wall had a window. So now there's a door coming from that room kind of directly next to where the seating is off of that awning window from the kitchen. So now you have this circulation of space. Then we were able to give two functional millwork walls, one that has a full size wine column, coffee, built in coffee bar, a sink, and then the opposite side has under counter drawers and ice maker. And so now it's a full beverage room. So that could be like morning coffee, that could be um, evening tea or alcoholic drinks. It's just like the perfect space to kind of take all of that storage for those items into the separate room. And also, this is a really beautiful space. What did you do on the walls here? Yeah, we ended up designing this hand-painted mural. So we had our local muralist come in. We had given her a rendering and some inspiration photos, and she hand-painted this on all of the walls. The really nice thing about hand-painted murals is they work really well around radius corners. If you look at the shape of the drywall and how it dies into the doors and the windows, it's a radius edge. So with tile, you really can't finish that cleanly. Even with wallpaper, you'll see different ridges and bumps. Um, and so with the hand-painted mural, you can go around any shape. Very nice. All right. Let's go into the butler's pantry. It doesn't look like a butler's pantry to me. It just looks like a cool sort of destination in the home where you could have conversation and hang out too. Yeah. So going back to her storage needs, she needed as much storage as possible. And also, you know, most butler's pantries, I would say, are almost like closets in a way. They're not really like a pass through space where, like this one is. So this one is where you walk through every single day when you come home. So you walk from the garage through your laundry room, through the butler's pantry. That's how you get to the kitchen. That's how you get to your formal dining. When you're entertaining, your guests are going through the space from the formal dining to the kitchen. So it's highly trafficked, which is why we kept most of it closed. So it's highly functional, but aesthetically beautiful. Tell me about the cubbies. Yeah, so we wanted to bring in um, kind of a sculptural element. If everything was closed in the entire space, it would feel a little bit closed off. So we brought in a black oak, so a black stained oak. It's the same wood species as the cabinetry, but it's just stained black. So it has the same grain. And then we designed these kind of radius vertical columns that go countertop to the ceiling and then kind of this chunky shelf along that has built-in LEDs. So now it's almost like a display space, but it's still super functional for her. Really nice. Love that. So let's talk a little bit about your success. Uh, 30 plus employees now. Last time we talked, it was you and a handful, maybe. I don't know what it was, but it's been yeah. almost three years since we last talked and, and did a tour with you. I know a lot, a lot is going on. Um, yeah, we've, we've kind of doubled our team every year for the last four ish years. Um, now we're not looking to double in numbers. Now we're like, okay, let's build this really solid foundation, this core team. Let's remain a boutique design and construction firm. Um, but let's, really tailor our services and uh, market to the exact clients that we want to work with. So tell me about House and House Pro and how it's impacted your business. Yeah, House Pro um, was basically the first project management system that we got when I started my business. And we get a lot of people that reach out to us that have found us on House. So it's been great for operationally running the business, but also um, you know marketing and, and getting more clients and really capturing all of those reviews, uploading our portfolio. So it's helped us in so many ways. Um, it's how we do all of our invoicing. It's where we house all of... <laughs> play on words. It's where we house all of our inventory. So um, all of the styling pieces that we use when we stage a project, those are all saved in-house. Um, so it's helped us in so many different ways. Cool. 
you got time for one more space? Yeah. Awesome. So tell me about this powder room. Looks like you put some terrazzo in here as well. Yes, I love this powder room so much. We brought in that same terrazzo material from the kitchen. So it's nice when you can repeat some materials throughout the home and it feels very cohesive. And people always ask, how do I make my home feel like cohesive? It's, it's repeating some materials. You don't need to create a completely different vibe in every single space. And then um, that main wall behind the vanity, we, we typically like to tile wall to wall on wet walls. It just makes it, again, more functional, easy to clean. And then you don't have all these different seams and edges and drywall. It allows you to also use that almost as a backsplash. So it's a full height kind of terracotta looking porcelain tile. And then we brought in that same collection on the plumbing for the wall faucet. So it's also in that vintage nickel. And then we just kind of played with some of that asymmetry um, with the mirror and the sconce. So it's tiny and doing something floating as well makes the space feel bigger. Uh, we also have a few different lighting accents in here. So the mirror is actually backlit. Um, the sconce is, of course, uh, lit up. And then we also have ceiling fixtures. So um, by giving you different lighting moments, by lifting things off the floor, by doing a wall-to-wall -wall tile, it makes the space feel bigger. Well, congratulations on all your success, Caitlin. Amazing stuff. Love talking to you about your work. And I can't wait to see more of it. And uh, we'll do it again. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. This was so much fun and I really appreciate it. Thanks, Rick. Okay. See you. Bye-bye.